Hey everyone, it's Whitney. Welcome to another DIY art video. Now, if you're anything like me, you've been completely obsessed with TikTok. I mean, I am so inspired by the creativity and the talent on that app. It is mind blowing. There's one video in particular that kind of inspired this whole art project idea. There was this guy who was, I think is like a ballet dancer. He was jumping off of a jump thing. What are those called? Bouncing boards? Jumping boards diving board, wow, into a pool and doing different ballet poses. It was so beautiful and so magical that I saved the video into my like saves folder. And later on, I came across a photographer who takes slow-mo videos of dancers and then kind of like freeze frames on their pose when it's like to the full extent of the pose. I don't know, can you tell I'm not a dancer? I don't know all this, all this language. So I am so in awe and inspired by these dancers and the photographer that I kind of wanted to bring the essence of that art form into my home as a piece of pop art. Wouldn't that be awesome? We get to like celebrate the talents of these other people by bringing, by putting them into a piece of art and bring it into our homes. I will have the photographer and the dancer's TikTok accounts listed below so you can go over there and give them some love because they totally deserve it. I'm gonna show you a few different ways and techniques that you can create a piece of art like this in case you wanted to do like an Andy Warhol style self-portrait. You could do this of your kids, of your pets, of a best friend, whatever. I mean, you can use any sort of image, but the technique is going to be the same. If you're new here, hi, welcome. My name is Whitney and I help you DIY a cozy home with DIY art projects like this, DIY home renovations, home product review, and anything to make your house a little bit more cozy and more of a home. So if you like videos like that, give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing. I would love to have you here. All right, let's get into this because I'm excited. For this project, I'm gonna be using a big 20 by 20 canvas and I'm going to divide it into four quadrants. Draw a line in half and then draw a line in half again and you will have four 10 by 10 quadrants. So here are some colors that I grabbed that are kind of in that pop art kind of world. Definitely liking this ocean breeze this bright yellow and this pink blast. Now my initial thought is kind of like this right here. If you didn't want to do bright, you could swap these out for something a little bit more muted, but this is what I'm going for, something a little bit more fun. Vanilla here, bright yellow here, pink blast here, and then this ocean breeze here. That's what I'm thinking. If you are not comfortable freehanding this along the line, you can always use painter's tape. So you are gonna wanna make sure to get the sides of your canvas. So I am gonna do two coats to each section, but you're gonna want to let each section dry thoroughly before you move on to your next square, or the seam between the two pink colors is gonna start to muddy, and we don't want that. So I'm gonna do one coat, let it dry, two coats, let it dry, and then move on to the next square. techniques that you can do to get your image transferred onto canvas. You can print on tissue paper and use Mod Podge. That kind of is the best way to make the image feel like it's a part of your actual painting. You can print onto a heatless transfer, which essentially is you're making a sticker and putting that on top. But the downside to that is it looks like there is a sticker on top of your canvas. It doesn't look like it's part of the actual painting. Or you can use a technique that utilizes a gel medium like this. But this is good for if you are transferring an image to an entire canvas. When you're cutting out a little part you can definitely see where the paper stops and the canvas the art where the painting below begins um, a thing to know if you're using this technique is you're gonna have to reverse your image because you're gonna be printing it out and then putting it ink side down and then also when you're using a method like this it's kind of hard to get just the paper off and leave the ink behind the image becomes a little bit less saturated it doesn't look as good so I'm gonna be showing you how to do the tissue paper Mod Podge technique so let's get going on that one in order to print our image on the tissue paper we have to adhere our tissue paper to another piece of paper. I'm using cardstock. You can use just regular computer paper. Use whatever you got on hand. So whatever side your paper feeds into your printer, you're gonna wanna make sure you tape down that entire side. So my printer, the paper goes in, it turns around and comes out. When I go to put this in my printer, I'm gonna do it tissue paper side down so when it feeds in, it can be printed on the tissue paper. So James B. Whiteside, the guy in the middle, is kind of who inspired this whole thing. And then David Hoffman from Shark Cookie is a photographer that did the other images that we're going to be using. So for this, I'm just screenshotting the dancers when they get to like the apex of the position. So I just brought that screenshot into Photoshop. 
And now I'm going to do my quick selection tool and I'm going to grab the outline of her body. We're gonna copy and paste it right onto itself so it's a new layer. So Command C, Command V, we can get rid of this first layer. And now we have the cutout of the dancer. Now in order to give this like a posterized effect, you're gonna go up to Filter, Filter Gallery. So you're gonna go over here to Artistic and then hit Poster Edges, and that will turn her into a poster. So this is an eight and a half by 11. We need to adjust it for the right size. And that is about good. So we know our edges have tape on them, so we don't want to bring the image all the way out where it's gonna be printing on the tape. We wanna have it centered right in the middle, and now we can print it. All of my images are printed on tissue paper. Now it's important to let these dry fully, like let them dry a good 24 hours, because if you don't let these dry for a good 24 hours, then when you go to transfer them, the ink is going to bleed, the paper is gonna to be too thin and rip. So be patient and let them dry for 24 hours. I'll see you tomorrow. Now, when you are figuring out which quadrant to put your lovely photos in, you're gonna want the whole essence of this piece of art to tell a story. What's the relationship of your images? Do you want them all facing in towards each other? Do you want them facing away from each other? What do you want the emotion to be? What do you want it to say? Look at the colors in your images and see how they relate to the colors in your color palette. This chickadee right here, she's got yellow and black stripes on. Now, do we want to put it on the yellow? You could, but do we want to put it on the pink and reference the yellow? Yeah! This guy, it's got a little bit of yellow and a little bit of purple in his swim trunks. Do we want to put that here or do we want to put that here? This lady's got a purple swimsuit on. We could put her here. Now we're starting to get a little bit of a cohesive storyline going. Now this one, if I had to pick favorites, would probably be her. So she's going to go up top left because that is where your eye is going to hit first. And I love the contrast, the black bathing suit and the light vanilla yellow background. So now we have the color relationship figured out and we have the figure relationship figured out. All of the figures are facing each other and all of the energy is being thrown towards the center of the painting. Now we got our first lady cut out. We're gonna flip it over and put a very thin layer of Mod Podge on the back. And remember, when this tissue paper gets wet, it gets very, very, very delicate. Make sure you have a piece of like cellophane around because you can use this to press down the image. It's not exactly how I thought it would turn out. <laughs> um, <laughs> I don't really know what to think about it. It's kind of giving me like dance school poster vibes. It's not my favorite thing I've ever made. Uh, so not everything that you're gonna try to do is gonna be perfect. So I wanted to include a kind of fail in here. It's not totally fail, I do kind of like it. It's not my favorite thing. But I just wanted to let you know, sometimes the internet can be a little bit too perfect. And I wanted to share with you something that was a little bit maybe not so perfect. So instead of having four different images, maybe you could just print out four of one image and have that same image in each square. That might be a little bit more cohesive and look a little bit more pop arty. But I thought it would be fun for you to see a process of doing something like this, but you can choose different images to make it work for your space. Now that it's in the space, I'm liking it a little bit better because you can kind of see the colors that it's playing off of in the kitchen. You're kind of getting the, the vibe in here is a little bit more kind of funky, modern, a little bit more artsy. I do like some of the squares individually. Like I think this square looks awesome. I think this one looks awesome. This one looks kind of too realistic of a photo to really get the essence of like that posterized effect. And this one looks really good, but I don't think it looks that great on the yellow background. Two out of four is not too shabby. I am gonna leave it up in this kitchen because it's kind of weird. It's kind of fun and funky. Well, you guys tell me in the comments below, do you love it? Do you hate it? What would you have done differently? I'm curious to see. All right, well, I will see you all on the next one. Bye.